Hey, it's all giving you guys the word of Warcraft. It is a brand new year or so. We might as well go over this brand new patch that's coming. This is hopefully the last overview of the 715 patch. We pretty much have all the components in place. Uh, so now I'm just going to talk about them uh, kind of sort of briefly. And at the same time, kind of a review of the patch. Overall, this patch is a pretty nice answer to a lot of the concerns that players have had over the past several months. And just like the 7-1 patch, it is a lot more meaty than the old 6-1 patch of yore. Hopefully you guys remember that one, right? Woo! Garrison stuff! Yay! It's, you know, Twitter something, something or other. A couple of months ago during BlizzCon, Aiden Hesikostas explained that this patch would be kind of, it'd be a small, it would be labeled as what's called a small patch. There's not going to be a whole lot to it, but at the same time, there are a couple of features to highlight, and for some players, these are pretty big. First of all, Mr. Pandaria Time Walking is coming back. A handful more dungeons are going to be added to the already pretty big time walking pool. Along with that is an appropriate reward system that pertains to that expansion, so you're going to see different looking mounts and different looking cosmetic goodies. Just just like all the other time walking, you're going to have to go to that expansion's particular hub in order to turn in the initial quest and to find the vendor. And in this case, you're going to the Shrine of Two Moons, which is what I think most people still have their hearthstone set to anyway. Brawler's Guild is also coming back in 715. After a kind of lazy showing during Warlords of Draenor, it's coming back with a lot of new features to it. Of course, we're going to see the return of some old bosses, we're going to see some new bosses, we're going to get brand new shirts, there's mounts and other cosmetics, and there's new gameplay features, including one where all of a sudden the people that are queued up might be pulled into kind of an impromptu raid. Micro Holidays are also going to show up in this patch, but we're not going to see the first one until I believe January 21st. That's the call of the Scarab Holiday, marking the first time that the gates of Ankaraj were opened. During those few short days, you can go down to Silithus and participate in some of the old school activities of yore. The faction that has the highest participation rate on each realm is going to have their faction flag hanging over the gates. That's just one micro holiday and there's going to be more that are rolling out with this patch. And for all we know, they're going to make up more holidays as they go along, like, uh, like a national donut day. Yes! Related to micro holidays, normal holidays that include a dungeon queue, so for example the upcoming Love is in the Air holiday, or the Headless Horseman one where everyone gets the mount except for me, those queuable events are going to be scaled with your level. That means depending on how many tombs you have, you can multiply your disappointment many times over, and I can't effing wait. So those are the featured additions to the pad, but what about other additions, or like changes, and stuff like that? Well there are a lot of gameplay changes to our classes, to our specs, uh, thanks to changes with legends secondaries, and secondary stats. So this is more like a high level overview, but the intention of this patch is to take the prominence of secondary stats and kind of flatten that a little bit. There was a lot that was done under the hood regarding the effects that secondary stats have on our skills, as well as the skills themselves to kind of compensate for the possible drop in secondary stat rating that we're expected to see. Maybe. Two other things to note, regarding Marksman and Beastmanter Hunters, traps are making a comeback. Hopefully that'll mean a small return of the class fantasy that Hunters kind of lost back then. Also for Retribution Paladins, the much maligned Greater Blessing of Might is removed, it's gone. In its place is pretty much nothing, they're gonna buff Rep Paladins to an appropriate spot so that way it kind of offsets the missing skill. Greater Blessing of Might was in a weird spot for a number of reasons. It was kind of weird for the strategy of a Rep Paladin was to buff the highest DPS in the raid and that that in turn affected their own DPS. It Eh, it kinda sucked, it didn't really feel good, and now it's gone. A couple of changes to professions also managed to make their way into this patch. For scribes, the cost of Vantus runes has been cut pretty much in half. I don't have any data, it's just my opinion, but Vantus runes just don't seem to have the big impact that, uh, that Blizzard thought that they would have. And the cost of them was a little bit too high, several times the cost of a Tome of Tranquil Mind. So while I don't think that they're going to suddenly sell like gangbusters, it's gonna be at a slightly better spot. Enchanters will be able to enjoy several cheap recipes that are going to come out for the next slot. In my opinion, it's a pretty fair answer for the super expensive enchants that exist right now. All that's left now is to make some better enchants for cloaks, because 200 to a primary stat just, well, kind of sucks. Engineers are going to get a little bit more love, but still not enough in my opinion. One, they'll be able to make a new kind of Reeves battery. This thing has a 30 minute cooldown, but it has unlimited use. Two, they'll be able to craft 880 gun helmets, which is cool because one, it has a decent item level to it this time, and two, that the gun does more than 10 damage. In order to craft these things, you need materials that can only be gathered by engineers with a special shoulder enchant. In my opinion though, blacksmithing really lucked out in this patch. In 715, special blacksmithing quests are going to be dotted all over the world, mostly the old world, they're going to unlock new recipes for old weapons that otherwise are no longer available in the game, at least not till now. 
You basically go into old areas of Azeroth, farm a bunch of stuff, get the recipe, then you gotta craft it using those old school materials. So here's a tip for the miners out there who feel like they got screwed in favor of the herbalists. Vanilla materials are going to be in hot demand, so start farming for them. You don't have... You don't have that long. Finally, the Obliterum level is going to go from 8 to 10. That's going to take us to an 865 item level. Does that item level suck? Yeah, sure. But do you mostly have control over your secondary stats? Yeah. But are those secondary stats still important for your class and spec? Probably, but not as much as it is today. This week marks the kind of time frame when a lot of players are going to hit Knowledge level 25 for their artifact. After 4 months in Legion and observing the arguments for how much AP grinding that players had to do, I ask myself, did I really grind or did I just play the game? The only thing left to do now on my main is to use an artifact weapon that I haven't even so much as touched and just jam it full of artifact points, just for the sake of looking at it. And with some other characters really close to knowledge level 25, I give myself a pat on the back for not really trying to earn artifact power at all, cause now it's gonna be easy. For my kind of fresher ult though, I'll be able to enjoy what's coming in 715. Artifact knowledge catch-ups are gonna come in a few flavors. One is the one that we're used to. You start up to two work orders for 500 resources, and that gets you an artifact knowledge tome every 3-5 to five days. If you're under knowledge level 15 though, you can buy them without the use of work orders at all. For the same cost of 500 resources, you can level up your artifact knowledge level from 1 to 15 at 500 each. There's no cooldown to that, the only restriction is that you gotta farm those resources on that tomb. And there's another new kind of tome called a compendium. Depending on the knowledge level of your most progressed character, you'll be able to buy this compendium at the low cost of a thousand resources. This tome can immediately apply a knowledge level of 5, 10, 15, or 20, again depending on the knowledge level of your main character. So basically for a lot of folks over the next couple of weeks they're gonna hit knowledge level 25, they're gonna be able to buy a knowledge level 20 instant tome and and trade it to their alts. That is not bad at all. From there they just need to apply 5 work orders for their alt characters and ta-da, that was level 25. So this catch-up makes it a really good time for, to roll an alt or to jump into the game if you haven't yet. And while this isn't related to the patch, on January 17th the Nighthold raid is going to open. With it are going to come a couple of things that I wanted to talk about really quick. One is that there's going to be an available quest line that will let you upgrade your legendaries. The other is that this quest line appears to be related to the Search for Illidan quest line that we've been doing for the past couple months or so. So if you haven't done so already, too bad, spoiler alert. But over the course of this expansion so far, we've been kind of on the hunt for Elden's soul. A big bottleneck comes in the form of a quest line where we need to farm dungeons. There's a total of 80 of these soul fragments that we need to collect from these dungeons. And for whatever reason, we can only collect 10 per week. So we can only speculate why it's being paced in such a way. Personally, I think it's a way to encourage a little bit more dungeon farming. Critics argue that this is a way to kind of gate content. It's that old argument of, oh, this is a way for Blizzard to retain subscribers. Which is a little funny because I could apply that argument like anywhere. Yeah, like why doesn't Blizzard just release all the raid tiers and all the content and everything at once? No, they just spread it out because they want to retain subscribers. <laughs> Anyway, there is a concern between players that just haven't done the quest line, or, you know, they might be really behind, or they might have multiple alts that they, that they meaningfully uh, use as like multiple mains, and they don't want to have to go through all that kind of farming. Now for people that do have multiple mains, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for them because I'm sure that they're also uh, hoping and waiting and crying over legendaries as well. But for the person that's like, hey, you know, I want to roll a different tune altogether for, for the Nighthold raid because, because I feel like it. And looking past the question of, hey, why are you doing this so late? That's not important. Players should be able to, you know, switch mains uh, as they feel like it as long as their team is okay with it. It's not a problem till it's a problem, right? But anyway, for folks that are in that or in a similar kind of position, that, that does kind of suck. I predict that either while I'm doing post-production in this video, or sometime before the Nighthold Raid actually opens, Blizzard is going to either inform us that this is going to happen, or they're just going to straight up uh, lift the 10 soul fragment per week restriction. And I think that's fair. I mean, there's a certain balance between... Um, you know, putting a certain amount of work into your main and getting a benefit or a boon for your alt uh, versus, you know, getting everything account bound. I think it's a little bit weird to have the 10 per week limit anyway, but I think that lifting it in the next couple weeks is, is a good thing. As for everyone that did put in the work already and they're kind of griping about it, I kind of understand where you're coming from, but it's not like you weren't going to put in that work anyway. 
Anyway, aside from the nitty gritty details about legendaries and stat changes and the individual class changes, I think I've covered just about everything that there is for the 715 patch. Thanks for coming and I hope this was informative for you and that you stayed and listened to some of my opinions. Like and sub for more content and hopefully we'll be able to hit another milestone soon. But it's time for me to go. Thanks for coming. I'm Soul. Stay breezy guys.